Alright, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using uh, HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. In this video I'm going to just kind of work through a case study of a recent website that <clears throat> I completed maybe a month ago. Uh, it went online. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, this is a website for an author. So uh, he is creating books, writing books, and needed just an author, like a landing page, um, to tell people about who he is and to keep them updated, uh, both through an email subscription list and also just to keep them updated on the progress of the books that he's writing right now. Uh, he's a new author, so it's not a, a ton of content here, but um, wanted to build out a space where he could grow a little bit so as he begins to complete books and to publish them uh, we have more spaces and a layout that's friendly to do that uh, in the future. Uh, so the first thing I always start with is some sketches. Uh, I always have a, a sketchbook handy and this is where I start with most of the projects and even some of the smaller things just ideas that I have. So it's super handy to just keep a sketchbook. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be given a gift of one of these grid uh, sketchbooks which makes it super handy to, to keep everything sort of neat. Uh, I'm not a neat freak but I, I do like straight, <laughs> straight lines and so uh, I like to be able to just connect the dots and, and it helps me to do some space, spacing sort of issues where you're just you know three rows down and um, you can create some better ratios even in your sketches. So here are a few different sketches I had. I knew the content was going to be, um, we needed to feature his name somehow. Uh, we needed to feature a bio and we need, um, they knew they wanted a book progress bar. So this helps uh, kind of on the back end. You can do some things to display on the front end. Uh, you know, I'm writing this book and it's, you know, I'm in this part of the process of writing the book. So uh, like people can join in too. Uh, the progress of the book and come back and they can see you know how far he's gotten that sort of thing and then a big part of it was a subscription uh, email like an email sign up uh, which was used through uh, MailChimp so we knew that going in and then just a little bit of contact information uh, in the footer social media and mostly social media is what we we're gonna put in the footer <clears throat> so just kind of a basic landing page uh, this is really the call to action um, and then there's a couple of, you know, just points of interest or areas of interest. And I just flip flop some of those things around, played with uh, a photo in the header, played with no photo in the header. Uh, same thing here. This is like super linear and crisp going all the way down the page. Um, this is a little bit more centered. And this one is just kind of a little bit all over. Um, and then I took those sketches and I went into XD. And then I created these wireframes. Um, so these are like three directions that we could go uh, with this. Uh, here's <coughs> sort of that first one uh, with a nice bio and you kind of lead with uh, a background image. Uh, I was thinking in here behind his name. And then you lead with the bio and the, um, the social media and then you kind of get down into uh, a little bit more actionable content toward the bottom. Uh, this one I pulled the actionable content up a little bit and so between you know the introduction and maybe people already know who his name is so um, they can keep abreast of the fact that he's an author and he's writing his his next new book and if you don't know as much about him you can come down here and, and learn a little bit more and then if you'd like to take the action of uh, subscribing to email updates you can do that here and then this is uh, essentially just a kind of another take on that you can see it's really the header uh, that's the difference so instead of a header with some space and padding around it uh, we would have sort of a background header that takes up two-thirds and then you know his name with a little introduction there and then if you wanted to learn more you could click here and come down to the bio section so uh, I sent these off to the client the client came back and they really liked this one so the third one so I went ahead and uh, did some iterations on color um, and really what I was trying to do was see if we can see this better I was trying to sort of match um, 
I had this photo of the author and I knew that this was what they wanted uh, as their final image. So they don't, the tricky part is with authors or with artists or people who don't, they're not companies, they don't have a definable brand other than their name, um, is that they don't have a definable brand. So there's no brand colors necessarily or that type of thing. So you got to try to find uh, color somewhere. And so I chose this image and I started pulling out uh, some of the blue color here you can see and then once I pulled out a color I could riff a little bit on that. I like to use a tool, tool called uh, Adobe Color or Cooler K-U-L-E-R and then it's a it's a design tool online uh, that allows you to <clears throat> it allows you to choose colors and then you can uh, pull out an analogous color palette or complementary color palette and then you can kind of manipulate the colors uh, as you want and so it helps you to quickly be able to iterate um, color palettes so I think it's uh, Adobe so just like the the program like this and then uh, cooler or color I don't know how you say it but K-U-L-E-R and uh, if you search that you'll be able to find it so we did a few things pulled out some purple He's a man, he's a, a male author, and so trying to do some things that are a little bit more um, a little bit more male, um, a little bit more masculine, I guess. And uh, so just kind of iterated through just some different variations of that, both with the text and with the heroes. Um, this one it's kind of pulling out some of the colors in the background. The green was really playing off of some of these colors in the background. <clears throat> in the end, they chose this uh, color palette here with the dark blue and the, the brown. This is really like a classic sort of uh, the Chaps brand, if you think about that. Uh, so it goes well with everything. It fits in the browns and the blues tie in here. And it gives you a nice like pop right here with his story which is nice and a nice pop down here as well I wanted to try to go a little bit farther because this felt a sort of blocky color to me and so I wanted to try to integrate some sort of background image and and so did the author um, so we talked about some different uh, possibilities uh, he writes books uh, he's an author from Texas from uh, South Central Texas and so you know this is this is what it looks like down there and so he wants to kinda give that vibe of uh, country uh, not city um, Texas and so, but also not specifically Texas like blue bonnets or you know longhorn cattle or something like that but something that just says I write about stories about people who are in small towns or in countries or in the countryside so um, I wanted to integrate an image there's already an image up here. I didn't really want to muck this up any um, and compete with anything. And so, and and same here, I didn't really want to compete with the the text that you're supposed to be reading. So this was the logical place here. And so I just went ahead and, and did some iteration on that. I used, uh, for each of the different colors, I used different uh, background images that I'd found as well. And the client came back still with this color palette and really liked the way that this uh, background uh, came out. So you can see it sets everything off really well, but it also sort of has sort of a country feel. So between this, uh, sort of a sunset golden hour, and then you have this here with the, again, a sunset golden hour sort of thing. Uh, with the countryside, it really brings together, okay, he's an author, He he's from Texas, you can read down here, he's writing stories about small town. And uh, so that was where we landed with the design. Everybody was happy with that. And from there, we moved on to the development phase. In uh, the development, we needed a WordPress website uh, because this section right here was going to be powered by a WordPress widget. And so the author already knew that, uh, which helped to guide the direction of the platform. So I would have loved to have just done this up in HTML, but they, they really wanted this sort of uh, widget here. And the ability to add 
maybe some other things uh, like e-commerce in the future where you could sell books straight off of the website so <clears throat> we went with uh, WordPress and the WordPress theme that I like to use is called underscores this is actually created um, it was created by I want to say automatic yeah so it's created by the automatic um, company which is the company that runs and controls wordpress.com so this is uh, continually updated and it's essentially just a, a super lean basic starter theme for a WordPress website I even use this for my production work um, for the company I work for so when I start out I just give it everything that it needs so you can come up with all these um, sort of meta uh, things that go into the CSS file and you can also uh, choose to use SAS with it or uh, to include the WooCommerce boilerplate uh, which is really nice uh, you can go to github and you can actually um, contribute to the underscores theme if you want to click generate and it gives you a WordPress theme and then all you have to do is load it into um, the WordPress website that you've created and then you begin to work through the theme uh, excuse me through the theme so here's uh, the website structure that I used uh, this is a local copy um, so I'm just working locally here and uh, I use uh, ZAMP so I'm on PC so I use ZAMP for a local hosting sort of solution so that I can uh, see the website live <clears throat> and you can see here that I just have a this is the basic setup uh, for the underscores theme and then uh, when I have generated the theme or this is my basic WordPress setup and then I generate the theme here and uh, this is uh, all the files that are in the theme I've included a couple of different files so I have a home file and uh, I make a copy of the header um, this is the original WordPress header and this is my header so I've included in uh, an icon font and uh, pulled in some Google fonts as well into the header um, I have created my own uh, app.js file and so there's a, f a few different things here to just kind of um, not much this does a smooth scrolling from one section of the website to another and there wasn't a lot of functionality that they needed it was kind of a straight website but um, there were a few things that just needed to be done here uh, I did choose the SAS option I like to use SAS in order to write my CSS and so once you choose that on the uh, admin side you need to add this plugin and the plugin is called WP-SCSS and that plugin allows you to use um, SAS inside of your development environment and so whenever I create these SAS files here uh, that plugin compiles them into this style.css uh, file and on the back side <clears throat> uh, we get we get our style.css uh, on the back side it's minified and this is the actual style file so here's the style.scss <clears throat> and then uh, I'll just include all of my files down here at the end and it pulls all those files in and I can use um, I can use some things like nesting uh, like you can see a little bit of nesting right here which makes it a little bit easier to read and to move through everything um, you can see I go with sort of a, <coughs> a modified sort of naming system BH is uh, Bruce Hammock for the author's name and then you know just what I'm try to be a little bit more descriptive whenever I use CSS um, I try and these are uh, predefined from the uh, book progress widget so I had to make some CSS uh, changes here I hate to use the important but when I don't have access to everything uh, it, it just makes it a little bit easier um, so I'm sorry you have to see that I don't like it either and then uh, just went through each of the different sections I have a global uh, set up here where this controls sort of the outer wrapper um, general styles utilities and layouts that I would use for the entire website and then each of these different sections is uh, the different sections of the of the design 
<clears throat> and then uh, have my images folder just pulling in some of those images. Um, I prefer most of the time to, to use this uh, images folder inside of uh, the theme as opposed to pulling things into the uh, media library. You could do it either way. And uh, some of these things are just generally, I don't use them, uh, but I also don't clear them out just in case I do want to use them in the future. All right, so that is um, that is the layout, the design, and the code. And uh, finally, I'll just show you what the, the finished product looks like. So this is the finished product of the website. And um, you can see that the, the update widget is here. And this is a little bit about his next book, right? And there's a little bit about him. I'm using uh, CSS columns here uh, to create this column effect. So at, as, the, um, as the viewport width shrinks and these columns get smaller, they actually will merge into one column. And then we have our MailChimp sign up down here um, over the top of our, our nice background and a little bit of social media down at the bottom. And you can see the responsive styling uh, here. So this is, you know, this is the size that we were at. And then as we move down, uh, most everything stays the same here, but as we get into a tablet, uh, it begins to change. So we had to make I had to make some CSS updates here in order to make that happen. Uh, we're still getting our two columns here, even on a, a tablet device. Oh, and this is the uh, this is why we we're including that JavaScript there. So and on a mobile looks nice, has enough space, and then all of our columns come together uh, into a single column, and then even at uh, a very small size. Uh, it's acceptable here. So that is um, BruceHammock.com is where it is if you're looking for uh, good clean stories as he says. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's in the process of writing uh, some new books and some short stories so uh, maybe something that you can check out in the future. And one of the cool parts of this is that you could um, you could get book updates in the future so as this changes, uh, you get the same book update. So this is this is actually connected to Mailchimp as well. So you can uh, update to a general email newsletter down here, and you can update to that or subscribe to that same general newsletter here uh, to stay updated. So a couple different ways to uh, kind of hook users in um, to being able to stay updated with what's going on uh, with the newsletter list. All right. Uh, well, that is the site. If you have any <coughs> questions or comments uh, about the process um, specifically, I guess if you want to talk about the design too, you can. But um, mostly, I'm concerned here about showing you the process, you know, of of the creating the website. So going from uh, this wireframe sort of sketch um, into our XD, where we come out with like a a real high fidelity mockup and then coming all the way through uh, to the website itself which you can see live online here <clears throat> um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe uh, I'm up over 4,000 subscribers now so I'm real happy about that and uh, lots of people have been helped by the tu tu tutorials that I'm able to do um, if you have any suggestions you know hit me up on Twitter uh, my Twitter handle is at Brian Hafferkamp and uh, Brian with an I and, um, yeah, sounds good. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.